Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Anwar Lavriya from Bangladesh, uh, and this is my presentation obtaining informed consent research. And uh, that very research is um, uh, in the context of Bangladesh, particularly. And that research also uh, incorporates some ideas um, from Japan. Actually, that will be a cooperative study. So uh, I'm going to explain the ideas and uh, explore the information of my paper. Uh, there may be questions. Uh, what is informed consent? Uh, actually, uh, that is a process. Uh, uh, particularly uh, in the research or in doctor-patient relationship, informed consent is a process which is designed to empower the individual to make a voluntary informed decisions regarding participation in the research. Uh, now, question, uh, why is informed consent important? Yes, uh, I'll not explain anything about this picture. You know, uh, this picture, I'm just skipping to another picture, please. Uh, I get your attention to this picture. And there is another picture. Okay. That is the case of Tuskegee syphilis test. You know, uh, uh, the US Public Health Services initiated an experiment in Tuskegee, uh, that is the city of uh, Alabama to determine the normal natural tendency of untreated and latent syphilis in black males. Some doctors and public officials was that 400 men who was under the study died between 1932 to 1972. These people were brought to give them medical treatment because of their contaminated blood. People with syphilis and those who were not infected are kept under observation without any real treatment of syphilis. The research subjects of the study were not informed that they were participating in the scientific research. The another case uh, that was happened uh, in the Second World War, you just see the picture, that was a Nazi war crimes. Uh, there are uh, different sort of experiments were conducted over the uh, prisoners, uh, mostly the Jewish peoples, were the subject of the research. And now, in second order, the trial observed, particularly, I am talking about the trial of uh, mm, uh, the name of the Nuremberg, Nuremberg, Nuremberg trial, observed that Nazi scientists and doctors conducted medical experiment and often abused in the name of drug trial on concentration camp, experiments on imprisoned twins, study of bone, muscles, and nerve regeneration and bone transplantation without, regu without regulating anesthesia or any ethical processes. The second, third one is very important things uh, that is sometimes called the immortal sale of human beings, that is the uh, Henrietta Lakes. Henrietta, uh, in 1951, Henrietta Lakes, an African American woman, was diagnosed with surgical cancer and was taking ra radiation treatment. During the treatment, the doctors removed her health cell and other malignant cells from her cervix. These two samples of the cells has been cloned for culture. Thus, Hopkins Medical University, a group of biologists, has made heredita a subject of research experiment. Heredita cell, more commonly, it is known as Hila cell, have been used to save the cancer and polio affected human beings. However, through the inventions of Hila cell, it contributes immeasurable good to development of medical science, particularly in the development of polio vaccines and numerous cancer treatment. But, 
her stain was collected for research without taking any kind of informed consent. She was not even informed in lifetime when she was admitted at the hospital. Even their family members also concerned about these informations after the after the death of Henrietta Lakes of 20 years, after 20 years of Henrietta Lakes death. There are a lot of cases are happened in these years where there is no any sort of ethical values and informed consent. That is the thing made the world community to concern about the some ethical principles. You know, the Nuremberg trial, the Belmont report, the Helsinki declarations and World Medical Associations, all they are involved with this sort of uh, uh, ethical concern, uh, how we can um, invent or how we can offer our processing a scientific research under the principles of informed consent or ethical processes. So, uh, uh, informed consent is the first and longest of the ten principles in the Nuremberg Court. Informed consent is included in every guidelines on research ethics. Informed consent is one of the eight requirements for clinical research. This is the basic point of informed consent. Now, that may be a question. I will not explain details about this matter for this informed consent. Actually, that is a uh, very nutshell of informed consent. Uh, there are there are principle of voluntarism, capacity. That is the capacity of the agent or subject, or that may be a patient. And uh, complete there should be a complete dis disclosure, and there should be a clear understanding of about the uh, diagnosis or uh, the research informations and the decision making capacity uh, that should be held by the participant or the patients. That is the central point of informed consent. I am just skipping these ideas. Uh, okay, there are different forms of informed consent. First of all, uh, there is a very popular informed consent is autonomy based <coughs> and the second one is basic efficiency based and third one is paternalistic. But uh, I would like to concern my discussions regarding the case of Bangladesh. Uh, that's very important question. What is the nature of informed consent with the reality of Bangladesh? Uh, okay. In reality, what kind of model is prevailing there? Of what kind of informed consent is followed in different universities and research institutes in Bangladesh? Is it paternalistic or relational? Or Beneficence? This is a significant question regarding the research and doctor patient relationship in Bangladesh. Firstly, we can assume that in the case of research and doctor patient relationship, the prevailing form of informed consent in Bangladesh is paternalistic. That may be a question what is paternalistic and why the ethical processes or the research or patient doctor relationship are paternalistic. So just we can go through, uh, go through the idea of paternalism. Uh, first of all, the first argument is based on the fact that researcher in a research, doctors in regarding the patient-doctor relationships are generally in the best position to know what is the best, best option of participants and patients because of their specialized knowledge. Doctor knows better. The researcher knows better. So don't ask anything about them. It's okay. And paternalism, it is the interference, it's a one kind of interference with, with parents, with the person's autonomy. The persons may be participant in the research and the persons may be a patient in the medical healthcare system. Paternalism justifies the decision by reasons referring exclusively to the welfare, good, happiness, needs, interest, or values of the person being constrained. Uh, on the other hand, 
Paternalism claims that it is benevolent action, irrespective for, of or even contrary to the willing of the beneficiary. It is always a violation of passion autonomy, though perhaps justified depending on circumstances. So uh, that is the main characteristics or traits of paternalism. And uh, there are two sorts of paternalism. The first one is strong paternalism and uh, weak paternalism. Strong paternalism sometimes uh, assume as an extended paternalism uh, that is taking such an action according to the strong paternalism. It holds that it taking such an action even though the person is mentally competent. But on the other hand, the weak paternalism, sometimes it is assumed, hold as a cooperative paternalism, uh, that taking such an action while a person is not or suspected to be incompetent. So, uh, uh, in the both aspects, the researcher should make all the decisions for a participant or patient. People are not always rational. They think that in the case of paternalistic system, the doctor or researcher think that people in most cases are not always rational or mature. So experts know better about the needs of participants or patients and their society. So qualified researcher or qualified doctors have good will. Now it may be a question. How can we be sure that doctors or researchers have a good will? That's been important questions to the paternal system of doctor-patient relationship and the uh, subject and researcher relationship. Now another question is that, is strong paternalism ever justified? There is no say, there is no voluntary uh, freedom, there is no liberty from the participant and patient side. All the things are known by doctors and researchers. So that's a very problematic form of paternalism. So what happened in Bangladesh? Just I conducted a research under these questions uh, between 2014 to 2015 and I have found that uh, the most of the answer to these questions are tends to paternalism. Most of the cases, uh, the participants and the researcher attitude uh, and, their, uh, and their mentality is very much paternalistic. So the study reflect that uh, uh, autonomy is not so strong. Information exchange, comprehension, voluntary choice are absent there. And there is a cultural uh, why that has happened because there is a cultural and religious authority, there is economic strengthening, there is a political power influence of Ali. All these things made the doctors and the and the researchers to be a paternal. So uh, that's a very serious point regarding the practices of uh, informed consent in Bangladesh. So, in Bangladesh, way of obtaining informed consent is paternalistic. Why? I think there are a lot of things in our society which reflect, which influence the researcher and doctor to be a paternal. First of all, I think that uh, uh, there is a presence of structural inequality in our society from the social, educational, cultural, and economic aspect, our society is a inequal and there are a lot of discrepancy between the man to man, man to woman, and uh, uh, urban area to rural area, uh, all sorts of things are there. And there are also abs absence of desirable conditions to survive. So there is no social opportunity and there is no necessary advantages for the people. There is another point uh, of our social structure that is feudalism. As I told yesterday, uh, before yesterday that uh, our society structure uh, sometimes it is claimed that our society is a capitalistic 
uh, in terms of economic processing. But most of the cases, our society is a feudal. In the feudal society, the, uh, the relationship between the state and the public or the doctors or patient or researchers and uh, participants are very much hierarchical. In the hierarchical system, there is a subject and there is an agent. Agent is too much superior and the subject is inferior. That very relationship is an exploiting relationship. All the time, the superior subdue over the inferior. That is the main problem of feudalism. <coughs> and I think most of the cases, uh, most of the peripheral area of Bangladesh, the society is based on feudalism. There are another, uh, the lot of factors are present in our societal system, which is the representations of paternalism. First of all, that we have a national culture which follow the seniors attitude and values all the time follow the seniors don't say anything follow what your seniors is uh, uh, giving you advice or suggestion there is also religious influence religious influence influence suggest us to follow the seniors attitude and values lifestyle and dependency pattern uh, their father or elder dependency is very much in, uh, important or potential. The scarcity of expertise, I know better. The senior know better. The doctor know better. The researcher know better. The political leader know better. Other people are ex excluded from the knowing system, from the power system. Limitations of income generating means uh, that is a single man dependency. Just if we uh, survey a number of family, we can see the all, all the members of the family are depend on a single person, one only arm. So the other members of the family never can disagree, never can uh, never can uh, give any different opinion against the income generating persons in the family. So. That very person is very powerful in our society, in the family. So that's the another, another uh, problem. Uh, family cultures, uh, that's one sort of gentleman cultures, and to be obedient and loyal. That's the very typical terms, to be obedient and loyal. Don't say anything against your boss. Don't say anything against your fathers. Don't say anything against your teachers. Don't disagree with your teacher. Don't say anything against the existing power system. That is the so-called gentleman system are existing in my political culture in Bangladesh particularly. So our society is cultural and value orientation is patriarchal. For male domination took a strong position. Systematically, such kind of trends excluded the women from the social, political, and economic sphere. It also subordinates women and their status as a natural and biological something to some extent. Such dominance is not coercive, but it makes the position and consent and, and consent passive to some extent that is also worthless, meaningless. So in the patriarchal society, the position of man is superior to women in terms of power and domination. The inferior is subject to all with the command and accepting the decisions of a superior right class. Here, man or father is the symbolic representation of strength and ability. Father, that is a symbol of power. Father, that is a symbol of something extraordinary. This condition has been embedded deeply in the mind of individuals, which re reflects not to disagree with the boss, senior or to the responsible agent. Just is here, just you offer the word. So uh, the logic of paternalism is particularly cultural and values oriented and also hierarchical. Such an attitude as the representations of patriarchal society has created the psychological basis of paternalism. Seriously it exists in our society, in politics and in various catharsis. But from these instances, I, I want to say 
uh, it can be understood that the constant process is seriously will be paternal, not relational or beneficiary in the context of Bangladesh. But paternalism, uh, that, that is the present situation of Bangladesh, but uh, that, this is also true, paternalism that is not free from criticism, that is a seriously suffering from a lot of criticism, a lot of uh, limitations, just I mentioned some, some of them. Uh, it is a lack of understanding the relationship between peoples. For example, in the case of research, it doesn't allow the equal relationship between research subject and researcher. And in the case of healthcare, it doesn't allow the equal relationship between the doctor and patients. So, in today's healthcare system and research activities, where researcher and healthcare provider generally do not have in depth long term professional relationship with their participants or patients. There is another problem that is ignoring wide cultural pluralism. You know, Bangladesh is a multicultural country, there are different sort of people who are living there, there are different kind of ethnic community and also religious community. A, uh, the uh, basic core religion is Islam, then Hindu and uh, Christian, Bordeaux and other religious peoples are there. So Bangladesh is in a true sense, Bangladesh is a multicultural state. But in the case of uh, ethical practices like informed consent, uh, uh, we don't find any sort of uh, 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 any sort of policy how the state or organizations will weigh in the cultural differences. So uh, I, I, I think uh, that has happened one before um, uh, our lack of knowledge and uh, lack of our uh, academic orientations. So I think that's the one problem. The other problem is unconcerned factors that are part of the exact problems that are facing by patients and research participants. Uh, 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 there are a lot of philosophical and ethical literatures which conclude that medical paternalism cannot be morally justified in cases of involving competent adults. Even it does not consider the participants or healthcare professional, the norm or can know what is in the best interest of the participants or patient. What is the uh, main or basic interest of participant or patient? That is not concerning issue there. In the case of Japan, we found the, uh, the same uh, scenario to some extent. Uh, for example, most of the cases, uh, uh, I collected this information from these uh, 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 research works. Uh, they claim that most cases physicians try to promote the patient's well-being independent of the patient's current preferences. Here, uh, they ignore the patient's autonomy. On the other hand, physicians tend to believe that patients should follow the medical advice because physicians know best. There is no choice, there is no options for the patients or researcher. The third point is that physicians control our medical information and final decisions. That's one kind of authoritarian style. Our patients do not have any self-determination. The same scenario are also exist in Bangladesh. I think paternalism does not fulfill the conditions of informed consent. You know, autonomy has been used to bear connotations with the freedom, independence, and self-determination. It does not fulfill the conditions of autonomy. Uh, uh, on the other hand, you know, autonomy, it includes the terms or condition of privacy, voluntariness, self-mastery, choosing freely, the freedom of choice, choosing one's own moral position, and accepting the res responsibility for one's choice. Uh, so, uh, I want to say, uh, in Bangladesh or in Japan, the process of informed consent is, consent is very much paternalistic. But uh, we are not clear why uh, uh, the process is paternalistic. Already I explained some, some points uh, in regarding Bangladesh, why Bangladesh uh, informed consent process is paternalistic. Right now, there is another question. 
Uh, how could be a informed consent relational autonomy based? Just I'm going to the point uh, what is relational autonomy. A relational view of uh, informed consent helps to, to see the importance of relationship on specific decisions and therefore be better recognized where oppressive relationship have shaped decisions. So uh, in the case of autonomy based, I, I want to say uh, uh, autonomy based informed consent is not also free from limitations. There are a lot of limitations of informed based, uh, inform, uh, autonomy based informed consent. Uh, I, I think there is an overlapping uh, of, of different ideas and views and there is also mutual understanding. It, it needs mutual understanding, opinion does not work properly. People of Bangladesh often afraid about the consequences of expressing their argument and objections. There is also our demandingness, more information, more concern, and more demand. Finally, the result is less. And uh, there is also fear to express. People often fear to express their opinion publicly. It is fact. The literate research are most cases are not helpful or cooperative to participate, to participate expressing their opinion and uh, freedom. Participants do not want to disagree because of the lack of speech skill and knowledge about relevant issues. So these are the uh, problem of uh, informed consent on, uh, which is based on autonomy. Uh, so autonomy based informed consent is also, has also some limitations which cannot be competent in regarding uh, Bangladesh or in France. Uh, what is the scenario are existing in Japan? We know that uh, in Japan there is an ICA's guideline for good clinical practices. The guideline for industry six good clinical practices that consolidated guidelines adopted within Japan in March 97, 1997. There is a Japan Medical Association. Uh, 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 there is also law that physicians should obtain informed consent. And there is also a human genome project in Japan uh, that is next generation sequences and information analysis techniques. Uh, so uh, dynamic consent systems are there, uh, particularly. But uh, in both cases, in Bangladesh or in Japan, the family-patient relationship is dominating. There is a, uh, that has a dominating factors, and most Japanese are not yet familiar with the concept such as human rights and informed consent. Ethical procedure must. Be, uh, though we know that ethical procedure must be conducted under a written contract between physicians and patients, but most of the peoples are not concerned with these things. The same things also happen in Bangladesh. So uh, uh, there are some problems obtaining informed consent in Japan. Uh, the patients attitude. Uh, some patients never ask anything about their medical condition because of their shy character. Patient participants do not interested to utilize the informed consent. Uh, after all. Uh, the patient, uh, uh, patient and uh, doctor relationship, researcher and uh, uh, the research subject relationship is master servant like mod model are following there. Um, but uh, uh, Japan, they have some extra ordinary additions in this regard. They have some legal procedure already launched. Uh, 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 yeah. I, I did not mention the year uh, of this legal law. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, this is a, this is a question. Uh, what Bangladesh can learn some things from the Japan? Uh, I think Bangladesh can incorporate uh, how to work under the situations of multifaceted cultural background. We know that Japan is also a multifaceted cultural state. Uh, there are different cultures and religions, uh, but I think that most of the cases they have some drawbacks. But uh, most of the cases, uh, Japan's um, follow uh, and uh, maintains uh, the multicultural formula or principles. Uh, so I think that uh, Bangladesh uh, can learn, uh, can achieve such kind of attitude from Japan, how to work with the multicultural. Uh, dimension, uh, accommodated different thinking and ideology, for example state, accumulate capitalistic norms, Shinto, Jain, Buddhism, Christianity, Nihilist, like these things are present in Japan. So culture blind ethical decision 
uh, making may must must significant complexities and consequently impair one's capacity to adequately address ethical questions. Uh, so uh, we can incorporate unity in diversity and we can pursue for integrity and cohesion uh, that can help us to make a good informed consent process. Uh, finally, uh, I make a difference between paternalistic informed consent and relational informed consent. Uh, I think uh, the result is all the same. So the word, most of the cases, were claiming for relational autonomy based uh, informed consent. But I think that the result is all the same. Uh, so in that case, what would be the viable or very much competent model for informed consent? In regard Bangladesh, I suggest uh, to follow the more, uh, beneficiary model uh, because uh, Bangladesh has uh, some uh, drawback. For example, there are a lot of poverty and uh, 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 most of the people are illiterate and uh, they are not concerned about their rights, how to conceive uh, or how to raise the boys of right. Uh, uh, most of the people are not concerned about these things. So I think if the state are ben uh, benevolent and the system are beneficiary, uh, then any sort of process or systems will be run. So that I offer a model uh, uh, a different sort of model uh, which incorporated benefit, care, health, love and accountability. Accountability is a very important thing regarding Bangladesh because uh, there are a lot of uh, inaccountability. Uh, for, uh, uh, the, 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 there is another thing from the Japan side. You know, you know uh, Japan provided a lot of aid and fund to Bangladesh uh, for, for the development of Bangladesh in different sectors like education and uh, infrastructural development. So, uh, in that case, I will request to the Japanese friends to ask the government why they are going to uh, provide aid to Bangladesh. Uh, to Bangladesh. Uh, they must follow uh, the, uh, this, uh, they should uh, provide or they should give some principles of accountability that if you follow these principles of accountability, then the aid will be continued. Otherwise, it will be stopped. I think that will make the state and the organizations to be more accountable. So I think all this together can, uh, can offer a good model of informed consent. Um, this is my presentation. So there are a lot of things are here. I uh, think someday or somewhere we can share these ideas together. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, so now, one question. Okay. Good. So thank you, uh, Bunyan, for your presentation. Uh, can I ask you, thank you, um, whether uh, it, what's the uh, Give me three things which are the same in Japan and Bangladesh and three things which are different related to medical ethics. Please. Three things that are the same and three things that you think are different. Because you've been to Japan a few times in these round tables. Uh, actually, uh, okay. um, there are a lot of studies already been accomplished in regarding informed consent uh, in Japan. I found some information that uh, there are uh, some limitations. Uh, yesterday, there are also paper where uh, the uh, uh, for, uh, uh, writers or participants want to say it. Um, informed consent process is not well running in Japan. Uh, because of uh, some paternal attitude. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the most of the Japanese people are feeling shy and uh, they don't uh, uh, want to say anything uh, about their positions. Uh, in the case of doctor-patient relationships, the patient think that thinks themselves he or she is a subject and the doctor knows everything. So, if they uh, say any different point or if they say more 
then the doctor can be uh, uh, can be annoyed to them or doctor can be uh, different to them. In that case, they cannot get a proper uh, treatment or medications. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is the factor uh, made the uh, patients not to share any things, not to, um, not to enjoy any sort of informed consent. I think uh, this is the same factors are also present in my country. That's the first point. The second point is uh, we don't have any legal processing for uh, executing uh, informed consent, but the Japan uh, has a, a very strong legal system and you know that uh, most of the cases as I know about the traffic system, if any persons uh, break the traffic law, uh, then he or she will be certainly or immediately uh, take out of the punishment. So I want to say uh, the, the law is very much effective and viable in the case of Japan. But in my country, there is a law, there is an act, there are many things, but we don't bother these things, we never care these things. This is the main difference between Japan and Bangladesh. Another thing is that uh, Japan has a, uh, uh, in different uh, uh, institutions, research institutions, as they are in different hospitals, medical uh, uh, colleges and hospitals, uh, they have some <coughs> ethical committee, uh, which we call IRB, Institutional Review Board. But in the case of Bangladesh, that's very, uh, a very disappointing matter. Uh, most of the cases, one two university, they have some particular uh, form of IRB, Institutional Review Board. But rest of the medical colleges, hospitals, and university, they don't have any Institutional Review Board. That's very disappointing point. So if we care uh, uh, about informed consent or ethical uh, principles are uh, executing or not follow, if we care these things, that's the another legs from Bangladesh side. But the Japan has a very strong law. Uh, to some extent, I think Japan can uh, overcome their own situation only because of their strong executing power of law. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, Because I saw you uh, uh, showing the uh, PowerPoint where, and you were talking about informed consent uh, in Bangladesh, and you were uh, saying that uh, parents, husband, they dominate the women. But how about educated women? How about non-educated women? How about uh, women in uh, rural areas? How about women in urban areas in Bangladesh? I don't want you to talk about Japan. Please talk about only what's happening in Bangladesh. Because the same thing is happening in India. Rural areas, women are dominated by the husband or by the parents. But in urban areas and educated women, they are independent. And they have to give the informed consent. That is the meaning of informed consent. So I want you to explain what is the difference between rural women and uneducated women and urban women or educated women. Please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think that's very important observations from your side. Uh, actually, uh, I, I didn't find any basic differences between the urban area, uh, rural area, uh, literate or illiterate people. Uh, actually, that's a, that is a fact of attitude. For the long time, the women are receive some uh, some sort of cultural behavior, some sort of cultural fairness, religious matter, and other things are present there. For example, an educated woman, she knows about her right, but she cannot speak anything. She cannot go outside at night as their boy, child, or, or the man can go outside at any time of the night. But in my country, the women never can think so. There is no problem. But if any woman back to her home at night, did night or 12 uh, or 12 or 1 1 a.m., then the people and the neighbor can say or criticize us. What a dusty woman that is. There is one sort of cultural attitude of our people. 
this problem is not from the women's side. That's the one thing. Another side is that most of the cases uh, I found, uh, uh, I'm university teachers, I'm teaching there for the last 20 years, I found uh, my 60% women students, girl students are not working. They are fond of to live in their house and that is the one uh, choice. Uh, sometimes I ask uh, a couple, uh, those who are my students, uh, boy and girls, so why are you are not giving her right to uh, take a job? Sir, I asked my wife to uh, get a job, but she is not interested. She likes to stay at home. So there's a problem of attitude. So I think that very really attitude is not, uh, the, the, the women are not responsible for that attitude. Actually, that attitude has um, pressured her from the society, from the existing cultural system, from the religious pattern, and a lot of uh, superstitions are there. So if you cannot remove these things from our society, whatever it is, Bangladesh or India or Nepal, whatever, I think it will never be improved. We, we, we you can be a feminist, uh, we can raise feminist voice, we can raise the right voice, but it will never be functional. It will be simply uh, uh, for our fashionable uh, uh, activities. But it will be functional when we can remove the things which have existed in the deep of our society, then it will be quite possible to make a very egalitarian society. Otherwise, it's quite impossible. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.